Hello everyone, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, where we crack open the mysteries of metabolic health one cell at a time. I'm Ethan Foster, and as usual, I'm here to ask the obvious questions with my trademark stoic charm. And I'm Alara Sky, your resident healthy skeptic and champion of all things weird and wonderful in the natural health world. Thanks for tuning in to our exploration of, well, the stuff your cells are screaming to tell you. Today's episode is titled, Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Because who better to consult about our metabolic mayhem than a guy who's been sounding alarms on sneaky sweeteners for what seems like forever? Precisely. We're talking about aspartame, that ubiquitous substance lurking in diet sodas, sugar-free gums, protein bars, you name it. Because if it's labeled sugar-free, we have to wonder, what exactly did they sneak in instead? Spoiler alert, it's not glitter or pixie dust, it's aspartame. And apparently, it's more trouble than we've been led to believe. So, hold on to your seats or your beverage of choice, because this ride might get bumpy. Let's start with the main problem here. Aspartame can spark insulin spikes without the presence of actual sugar. Think about that for a second. You're sipping a beverage that says zero calories, and yet your body is whipping out insulin like it's preparing for a sugar riot. It's the culinary equivalent of your home security system going off when there's no intruder. Your pancreas is basically yelling, alert, alert, we've got sugar inbound, when in fact, the sugar never showed up. It's a metabolic prank call. And over time, your body gets worn out from responding to all these false alarms. The end result? Insulin resistance, where your cells say, look, we've heard this before, and we're not falling for it again. That's a fast track to metabolic dysfunction, weight gain, and everything else we'd rather not invite to the party. So we've got an imaginary sugar scenario that leads to real health problems. Funny how illusions can wreak havoc in real life, right? Exactly. And it's not just insulin we're dealing with. Aspartame also stirs up trouble in your gut, specifically in that precious bacterial community that regulates digestion, metabolism, and immune health. You're talking about the microbiome, right? I've heard that's our second brain, or maybe our first brain if you're a pizza lover. That's the one. Research shows that aspartame can throw your gut bacteria off balance. Imagine hosting a very elaborate dinner party in your intestines, only to have aspartame show up, flip the table, and run away cackling. Now, if aspartame's messing up the gut, then we've got bigger issues than just insulin spikes, right? Exactly. The gut is your body's headquarters for nutrient absorption, immune regulation, and even mood regulation through neurotransmitters like serotonin. So when you disrupt the gut environment, you're basically telling those beneficial bacteria to pack up and leave. That opens the door for less friendly microbes to move in, upping your risk of weight gain, glucose intolerance, and other metabolic woes. Fantastic. So first, the metabolic trickery, then the bacterial revolution in your gut. Anything else aspartame might want to ruin? Oh, absolutely. According to further research, aspartame also stokes inflammation in blood vessels. It's like setting tiny, invisible fires along your arterial walls. And inflammation in blood vessels tends to lead to conditions like atherosclerosis, heart disease, and possibly an entire wing of hospital visits. Doesn't sound too appealing. Right. And it happens because aspartame triggers chronic insulin release, which then activates specific inflammatory proteins. This is the kind of sabotage no one wants. So, let's recap the heartbreak. One, aspartame triggers insulin as though sugar's present. Two, your cells eventually become rebellious, leading to insulin resistance. Three, your gut bacteria are thrown off. 4. Inflammation flares up in your blood vessels. And 5. You might end up with an increased risk of heart disease. That's the short version, yes. And let's not forget the breakdown products of aspartame, like methanol, which transforms into formaldehyde. Because apparently, we weren't creeped out enough. Methanol, industrial alcohol, the stuff you don't want in your glass after a poorly labeled distillery run. Precisely. It's not just about short-term sugar cravings. It's about long-term metabolic confusion and systemic inflammation. So the question becomes... How do we avoid this sweetener skulking around in our kitchen cupboards? If you see aspartame, acesulfame potassium, or sucralose, just put it back on the shelf and slowly back away. I can imagine the conversation at the grocery store. Hey honey, did you want a big load of insulin confusion or shall we skip that aisle? And the next step is to nourish your body with wholesome natural carbohydrates. Contrary to what some fad diets might insist, you do need carbs, but the source matters. Potatoes, ripe bananas, fruit, white rice, these can be part of a balanced approach to restoring insulin sensitivity. So, if my pancreas has been tricked too many times, I can gently remind it how to do its job by feeding it real carbs in a moderate way. That's the idea. You're essentially retraining your body to respond to genuine sources of glucose. Meanwhile, you give your gut a makeover with fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, and kefir. Let me guess. Fermented foods help replenish the good bacteria that got evicted by aspartame's rowdy presence? Right again. Fermented foods contain beneficial microbes that help reestablish gut balance. Think of them as the VIP guests who come in, fix the mess, and politely remind everyone to follow house rules. Got it. 
So, no aspartame, yes, fermented foods, moderate healthy carbs. And maybe we do something about overall inflammation, like quitting highly processed vegetable oils. Precisely. Linoleic acid, found in many vegetable oils, can add another layer of oxidative stress, especially if you've been overexposed to artificial sweeteners. Swapping them out for tallow, ghee, or grass-fed butter can make a surprising difference. It's funny, so many of us think diet or light items are safer, but it's like swapping out one troublemaker, sugar, for an even sneakier culprit. All these diet products create an illusion of health, but illusions don't nourish cells. They just fool them until things break down. Then you're left wondering why you're suddenly feeling worn out, inflamed, and carrying extra pounds you didn't plan on. So let's talk about the role of sunlight in all this. I saw something about supporting mitochondrial function and letting your body produce more ATP. Yes, that's an interesting angle. When you've been overconsuming vegetable oils and aspartame, your cells often struggle to produce energy efficiently. Regular, safe sunlight exposure can help rev your mitochondria, the tiny energy factories in your cells. So basically, we're solar powered to some degree? In a way, yes. We can harness the sun for vitamin D production and for boosting mitochondrial function. It's a natural synergy. But if your diet's loaded with linoleic acid, those rays could exacerbate oxidative stress on your skin. So the ideal path is to clean up your diet first, then soak up some healthy sun. Another irony, the sunshine is beneficial, but only if you're not marinating in seed oils or artificial sweeteners. It's like the universe is telling us that real food plus real sunlight equals real health. Makes sense when you think about it. Our bodies aren't meant to be tricked by zero-calorie illusions or industrial chemicals. We operate best on what nature provides in its genuine form. Let's pivot a bit to the big question. How fast can one recover after dropping aspartame? That depends on how much metabolic confusion you're starting with. Some folks notice improvements in energy, gut comfort, and even mental clarity within a few weeks. Others might take longer, especially if the body's been dealing with chronic inflammation for years. But the bottom line is that once you stop flooding your system with aspartame, your body can begin to recalibrate. And you accelerate that process by introducing healthier carbs, fermented foods, and anti-inflammatory choices while ditching the harmful stuff that set you back in the first place. Which brings us full circle to reading ingredient labels. It's amazing how many products wave a health halo in front of you, when in reality, they're about as beneficial as taking a nap in a hornet's nest. You don't want to find out the hard way that your so-called healthy snack bar is laced with artificial sweeteners that disrupt your metabolism. Now, I know some people wonder, why not just cut sugar out entirely? But that's not always realistic, and ironically, that's how many end up on the aspartame train in the first place. The motivation is pure. Reduce sugar intake. The execution, however, can be flawed if we jump from sugar to an artificial sweetener that does even more damage in the long run. A better approach is to get sugar from whole food sources in moderation, so your insulin response is natural and your body stays balanced. Agreed. If you can enjoy a ripe banana, why compromise with a neon pink diet drink that tastes like a chemistry experiment gone wrong? Exactly. Our bodies are quite good at handling natural sugars, especially when they come packaged with nutrients, fiber, and enzymes. It's the lab-made stuff that spells trouble. Let's talk about the heart disease angle a bit more. We know aspartame can accelerate plaque formation in arteries, basically speeding up atherosclerosis. That's what studies have suggested. The insulin spikes triggered by aspartame led to the release of inflammatory proteins, which then create a perfect storm for plaque buildup. If you keep exposing your body to it, you're basically encouraging arterial highways to become congested with inflammatory debris. And that's not a traffic jam you want, because this one can result in heart attacks or strokes. It's sobering to realize that a substance we casually drink in diet soda can cause our vascular system to choke up over time. Seems like a high price to pay for a sweet fix. And the marketing angle is genius if you think about it. People want to feel they're making a healthier choice by cutting sugar. But the solution can't be to swap real sugar for a phony sweetener that quietly disrupts critical bodily processes. I want to circle back to the gut. I'm fascinated by how these sweeteners can basically sabotage the bacteria that keep us healthy. When aspartame shifts the balance of power in there, you end up with more glucose intolerance and a higher propensity for weight gain. It's ironic. You consume aspartame to avoid weight gain from sugar, yet you might end up with weight gain anyway, courtesy of your messed up gut. A real comedic twist. I tried to lose weight by ditching sugar, and all I got was this metabolic chaos t-shirt. And then there's the appetite control angle. Hormones like GLP-1 can get disrupted, making you hungrier, not less hungry. So you eat more overall, which is exactly the opposite of what you wanted. So basically, aspartame has more plot twists than a soap opera. It fakes sugar, disrupts insulin, messes up your gut, sets your arteries on fire, and leaves you craving more food. That's the gist. It's like the arch-villain of sweeteners. Not exactly the sidekick you'd want for your health journey. So, how do we conclude this epic takedown of aspartame? By empowering people to choose differently. Step 1. Ditch aspartame and other artificial sweeteners. Step 2. 
Reintroduce whole food carbs for real energy. Step three, pamper your gut with fermented foods. Step four, reduce overall inflammation by avoiding vegetable oils high in linoleic acid. Step five, leverage natural tools like sunlight for mitochondrial support. And step six, pat yourself on the back for outsmarting the marketing geniuses who said zero calorie sweeteners were the ticket to health. Exactly, because your body's cells are anything but gullible. They know when something's off. If we keep ignoring that innate wisdom, the body eventually waves the white flag in the form of chronic disease. Well, if nothing else, aspartame's given us a cautionary tale about the dangers of jumping to fake solutions. It's better to embrace real food, even if it means adjusting to the natural flavors, rather than living in a land of illusions. Absolutely. It's worth noting that many people who switch to a more natural approach report feeling more energetic, noticing clearer skin, improved mood, and even better sleep quality. When your cells aren't stuck playing metabolic detective, they do their jobs better. This has been enlightening. If I didn't already have my reading glasses on, I'd go read every ingredient label in my pantry, because apparently these sneaky sweeteners like to hide in places you'd least expect. Prepare yourself. You might be shocked. But the good news is, once you're aware, you can make wiser choices. Dr. Mercola's insights remind us that we have more control over our metabolic destiny than we might think. So, to wrap up, if you want healthier cells, better metabolism, and a calmer gut, ditch the aspartame. Feast on real foods, get some fermentation going, and don't be afraid of sensible sunlight. That might not sound as flashy as guzzling a neon sugar-free drink, but your cells will thank you. And maybe, just maybe, you'll realize that real taste doesn't need to come from a laboratory. We can enjoy sweetness without tricking our brains or panicking our pancreas. That's our show for today, folks. You've been listening to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, where we delve into the hidden intricacies of human health and poke a little fun along the way. I'm Ethan Foster, encouraging you to keep it real, both in your humor and your diet. And I'm Alara Sky, reminding you that sometimes the sweetest victory is ditching fake sweeteners. Stay curious, stay healthy, and as always, tune in next time for more enlightening banter about the wonders of your body. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.